Jessie's story throughout her time in the oldest house is spent exploring multiple plot points. Her search for Dylan, the conflict with the Hiss resonance, and the drama surrounding the board. However, if we strip this all away, we are left with a basic story about a government agency whose mission is to locate, attain, study, and lock away mystical artifacts. They are broken up into two types, the altered items and the objects of power. However, for the purposes of the discussion, let's say they are two subsets of what I'll be calling a cursed artifact. These artifacts act as a core component for control story and gameplay. However, not much is known about their origin. Dr. Darling states as much in one of his presentations. The exact process of how an altered item is born eludes us. We find them in the aftermath of altered world events. They take the form of everyday objects, ever present in our lives, constantly evoked in the thoughts of millions of people, now infused with unpredictable energies. They're altered. The superstitious would call them cursed. If we put on our investigation hat, there are plenty of clues to be found within the game to give us a general idea of how they are manufactured. It is well known that objects tend to be the vessel for these forces. These archetypal objects, though, are only one piece of the puzzle. Every mirror in the world does not transport someone into another dimension. Only one specific mirror does. So there must be another ingredient involved that causes the altered effect. Let us take a look at the clues and see if we can find a reason for it. The first one is obvious. It is noted that the artifacts take the form of archetypal objects. The very first document in the game, the Prohibited Item Reminder, states that any object considered to be an iconic representation of an archetypal concept is denied access through the main entrance. The second document that is relevant is one dealing with urban legends. It discusses that the creation of altered materials are linked to altered world events. The next breadcrumb comes from an odd place, the Rubber Duck Supplement. This altered item was discovered in an agent's home when his daughter reported being followed by her toy, which began quacking at night. The implication is that the object was created in his home. In an update to the report, the agent in question was found to have illegally removed altered materials from the oldest house and took them home. An investigation was launched to determine if this affected the creation of this altered item. The fourth clue is from the black market document found in the investigation sector. A trading hub for cursed artifacts and altered materials was uncovered by the Bureau and located in the Czech Republic. After interrogating some of its members, it appears there is a vast web of vendors. These vendors collect and sell altered items and materials. The final link in this chain is found in the investigation order that focused on the jukebox object of power. The artifact was discovered in a diner whose owner reported that the jukebox was fine until a repairman from Blessed Repair and Service worked on it. We are given direct evidence here that the Blessed organization was able to create an object of power from scratch. If they can do it, it means someone has figured out how to do it. With these data points, it is easy to figure out what is going on. Altered materials are an essential ingredient in the creation of altered items. They latch onto an archetypal object which sparks the change. Altered materials are being collected and sold on the black market to paracriminals who are using them to create new, man-made artifacts. Some materials may be found in the aftermath of an AWE. However, we have one documented case of an agent stealing some from the oldest house. Since the house acts as a reoccurring AWE, materials are plentiful there. It appears there are criminals within the Bureau that are leaking materials to other organizations. Now that we have a running theory on how cursed artifacts are created, let's take a look at the nature of altered materials. While not given any relevance outside of a gameplay crafting mechanic, the documents inform us that they are lore relevant. We know that AWEs are caused by extra-dimensional forces intruding upon the perceived reality. These materials show up as a result. Since these are abstract forces, we need to analyze them in the same manner. At the end of the day, altered materials are abstract concepts given physical form. A universal theme or an unconscious impulse becomes something tangible. 
In this hypothesis, the house memory material is literally a memory of the oldest house given physical form. Threshold remnants are simply parts of a threshold that broke away and remained in this reality. Using this template, finding materials called remote thoughts, untapped potential, and confiscated motives, it is easy to understand what these abstract concepts are. Rather than being something that can only be understood in the mind, the energies that caused AWEs solidified them into something manifest. Something that can be used not only to craft character mods, but are ingredients for new altered items. The characteristics of the specific abstract materials used in the creation process help to dictate its behavior. One of the most fleshed out examples of this concept involves the Albany AWE in Altered Item 63, the Human Hand Chair. To quote from the incident documents, the Bureau had discovered numerous online message boards regarding loud noises coming from an abandoned shipping warehouse belonging to the Redacted Corporation. Local law enforcement had discovered numerous bodies in various states of mutilation in the vicinity. This, along with the noises, were considered to be evidence of a werewolf due to the fact that they only occurred on the last three full moons. Arish happened to be one of the ranger trainees deployed to deal with the situation. One side quest involved Jesse locating the other trainees from that AWE and reclaim silver bullets the crew got after the Albany incident. Because of the initial werewolf reports, the silver was an inside joke. Upon arriving, it was determined that the event was caused by a gravitational anomaly originating from the chair. These anomalies led to the mutilations in the area. Despite several rangers being injured, they were able to contain the altered item by waiting outside the warehouse until the moon went down. At that point, they collected the now docile object. It is probably no surprise, but werewolf lore is a powerful force in human collective consciousness. For centuries, stories of humans turning into feral beasts have captivated our imaginations and can be found across various cultures. Between the influence of folk tales, books, or film, it is a difficult task to find anyone who has not heard of a werewolf. Alleged sightings have been reported worldwide, some of which from the original Dutch colonies in New York. In retrospect, these sightings are now largely linked to ergot poisoning. This is a fungus that infected rye, barley, and other grains during certain climate conditions. Symptoms of convulsive ergotism includes muscle twitching, spasms, altered mental states, hallucinations, and delusions. Since everyone ate from the same food source, entire communities were known to suffer from mass hysteria and paranoia as a result of consuming contaminated food. This led the town to believe they had seen a werewolf. Because the ergot developed in specific conditions, once the conditions changed and the fungus died off, the mind-altering effects would stop as well. In some cases, they got used to the cycle of mass hysteria, then everything going back to normal. This helped to contribute to the belief that the werewolves would only appear on a full moon, as it was also a measurable cycle. This is reflected in the human hand chair, as it only acts up during the full moon. The only time it deviates from this was during the Langston's runaway side quest, when it was being influenced by an outside force. It is apparent that the altered materials used to create this artifact were heavily influenced by werewolf urban legends. These abstract ideas caught in the collective consciousness manifested as altered materials after an AWE. This brings up a question though. Did the Albany AWE create the human hand chair? Or did the human hand chair cause the Albany AWE? This next bit is only a hypothesis, so let me know what you think. The artifact was discovered in an abandoned shipping warehouse full of merchandise. The building was abandoned by the previous owner, which was an unknown corporation. If this company had ties to paracriminal organizations, they may have been shipping altered materials and altered items as part of a black market trade. After being abandoned, the chair acted up on the next lunar cycle, inviting the attention of the FBC. If this is the case, AI-63 may either be a man-made altered item or one accidentally made as a result of its proximity to altered materials. Regardless of what exactly happened here, one thing is clear. Even though the Bureau does not fully understand how altered items and objects of power are created, someone does. The jukebox is a clear example of a man-made object of power. 
The last question is their motivation. Are these paracriminals making them to sell to the highest bidder? Or is there a long-term goal here? One where these acts are simply a means to an end? I have another theory that directly addresses these questions, but it will have to wait until the next video. See you then. Thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed, please drop a like as it really does help out the channel. If you would like updates on new uploads, feel free to subscribe or follow me on Twitter. Have a good day and peace be with you all.